So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Ramblings. I'm back from a short hiatus of uh, visiting some relatives and uh, hosting a tournament. Um, and tonight I will be talking about the cultists, the new, fairly new supplement for the Ninth Age. And joining me in this endeavor is a good friend of mine. Uh, who uh, is also the the cult leader himself? It's uh, Vilman. How how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. A bit of a sound problem. I tried turning off uh, my headphones again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how how it goes uh, <laughs> through the through, through the show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Vilman. He's a sort of a lo local hobby hero with a, uh, a uh, an occult uh, dungeon in his basement uh, where he summons uh, local Nightish players to uh, several games uh, a month. Um, and not only that, but I also think he's one of the few players in the world so far who's brought the cultists to a tournament, a grand tournament this last weekend. Yeah, I, ha I had a bit of a head start. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that also allowed you to uh, bring an army uh, and enter it into the best painting competition, which I think is w with a very thematic army, uh, to oh, say the least. Yeah. Uh, and while you, you didn't win, uh, no. you, you, I can say as the, the host of that event that, that you did score some, some votes at least. You made it to, to, to well, four, fourth place, uh, just, just, <laughs> just shy <laughs> of the podium, uh, out of six entrants. Uh, but it's a very thematic army uh, around cultists. But uh, yeah, we can we can start in that end. Uh, as you said, you had a bit of a head start. So uh, do you want to unpack that? Yeah. Well. Uh... I started that, I think it's two years ago I started the Cultist Army. Uh, so, but I painted it as an empire, uh, empire of Sunstall yeah. army. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was pretty easy to just convert it to a Cultist Army now because everything was in play. I, I just needed the demons. So I had to speed paint some demons into the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's neat. Uh, so for tonight's episode, we will look into the uh, the fluff and the background of the cultists in the Ninth Age. We will have a look at their rules and how they play, and also finally a look at what miniatures are available. And in that segment, we will also take a closer look at your army and the miniatures that you are using. Yeah, sure. Uh, as a uh, hint I, to the listeners, I can say that you have a very diverse army with miniatures from a lot of different companies. Um, yeah, so I tried to uh, <laughs> gather all the information about multi-use, but <laughs> that was a bit <laughs> too hard. Uh, <laughs> it's just too many. It, it, it's mostly bits, and it's like one yeah. model from that company, one model from that company, and a lot of bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, but before we get into any of that, um, we have the hobby spotlight. Uh, and I understand that unfortunately you can't paint at the, uh, the computer desk uh, for various reasons. So you can just tell us what, you, what you're working on in general at the moment. At the moment, I'm just trying to convert some, some orcs with crossbows. Uh, oh. but I'm, yeah, but I'm not really just the crossbows. Good looking crossbows to orcs, that's that's hard to find. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I've been thinking about using some uh, some arms from the, the 40k, but uh, so, so you can get this uh, shooting sense, uh, basically. Yeah. But but actual crossbows, that's that's an issue, I suppose. Yeah, I tried the Age of Sigmar, like I don't know what they call the new new uh, 
No, but the uh, storm Stormcast do have yeah, some some cross yeah, still. They, I, I did like two of them, and I'm not happy with the results, so I think I'm gonna need to change the armors again to something else. But mm-hmm. still can't find any good crossbows because all the human ones look so small. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's an issue. Uh, it's a really cool entry that the orcs have access to, but there's not a lot of miniatures for it. No, we just need bit. Someone just needs to do a good-looking orc crossbow. Ooh, um, maybe. Directly. Yeah, uh, I know that there's a recent uh, uh, company that started up with a uh, uh, they called they're called Battle Bits, and what they Ooh. do is con- conversion sets for different uh, d- different armies and such. So, so far, they have. Um, a conver- conversion set for the vermin swarm. You can get uh, some cool weapons for them, but a crossbow kit for orcs would be awesome, really. Yeah, really awesome. I would buy <laughs> directly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I should. I shall pitch that idea to them um, because that would be really, really neat. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, for myself. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get my web camera to work this evening. Uh, I'm uh, trying to record another separate thing and see if I can weave these two t- together so you can see my desk uh, in real time. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. But I can say that I'm wor- still working on my Spectral Hunters. And to the untrained eye, it might look like I'm working on... I haven't gotten anywhere since last time. Uh, I'm still <laughs> working on ethereal stuff, washing green and such. <laughs> uh, but this is actually the second batch. I finished in the uh, the first batch. Uh, so they are standing right over here next to me. Uh, but I'm I'm up uh, up to about the same uh, step in the second batch as I was on the first batch in the last episode. So that's uh, yeah a bit ironic, I guess. <laughs> I've also kind of grown to not like these miniatures as much. Um, they have some weird stuff going on with their flames and such. Um, I kind of wish I had just scraped all those flames off. But, <clears throat> but um, yeah, not super happy. Yeah. I should say it's it's the hex rate miniatures from from Games Workshop. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's almost always when you get to the end of a unit. You get like, oh, I should have done that. Mm, yeah, the the uh, awesome power of hindsight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, it's they are are, are all right. I still think um, it's not the most exciting unit. I kind of wish I had g- gone from a more bold paint scheme. They are very dark now, uh, but uh, it's all right. Uh, so that's what I'm working on. Um, and with that out of the way, we will move on to some news. And the first item I have is uh, we got a lot of uh, miniature news this uh, uh, this time. And the first item I have is a uh, a new some news from uh, Shield Vault Miniatures. Uh, they have announced that the coming a month they will be releasing some uh, pre-order at least for the their uh, uh, forest goblins and you can see my screen can you yeah i can see it yeah so that's one of their plastic forest goblins from their kit it looks pretty big yeah kind of beefy yeah um <clears throat> It would be really interesting to see where they where they go with this. Yeah, I, I would like a, a scale comparison. But yeah, looks definitely. Bit... Yeah, yeah. The, the the details are so sharp, so it it's it seems that it's really big actually. Maybe it's one of these uh, three up models that uh, Games Workshop also use, mm. and they are gonna scale it down. Uh, yeah. I don't know how, what the pro- process is. What kind of plastic do they use? I I, I don't think uh, you've bought any wolf. No, I don't have any shield wolf. Uh, um, actually, but I, I think it's fairly similar to Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think that's that's uh, that's some good news. Um, sh I think Forest Goblins there were not a lot of good options to get the big units of them. Uh, you could get no. the shop kits and then put and just ignore the spiders basically, but that's fairly expensive and yeah. Or yeah, all the ones. Yeah, and and there were some uh, some metal options, uh, but having whole units of uh, forty goblins in metal is uh, not that uh, not that fun. I still uh, have sixty of them just from the spider kit. Yeah, yeah, that that, that spider kit was everywhere. Uh, <laughs> so e everyone has some spares of those, uh, yeah. I suppose. But still, not ideal to build, build units from, perhaps. No. Uh, so that's uh, good news. Uh, they they had a, a Kickstarter for this a while ago, but uh, it it failed for some various reasons. But they they've been keep keep working on it and are now releasing them uh, soon, hopefully. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also have a new release from Fireforge Games, the Lady Ravenclaw, uh, which is a female knight miniatures. I think it looks it looks nice. Yeah. That looks nice, but they Five Forge has a lot of new stuff. Their Kickstarter is going. Their Kickstarter that was last year, yeah, is also available now at the web website. I think. Yeah, the the undead stuff and the uh, Northmen. What, what yeah. Were called. I, yeah, I joined that Kickstarter, so I have my stuff from that, and that, those models are, are great. What what did you get? Uh, the spearmen. I used them at the tournament. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. Now that you <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah. But uh, I switched the uh, heads and uh, converters and stuff. But the the the, the base yeah, you had the, for, for, from it. You had, you, yeah. You had the the Britannia head with the, the pie plate helmet, didn't you, on the spearman? No, I had the the heads were from uh, Frostgrave. Okay. Oh yeah, your your cultist said heads. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We will look closer into that uh, later in the show. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in other news, I think uh, I, I mentioned that uh, Tabletop Miniature Solutions has a sale on uh, a, a Halloween sale, so the coming week, a fifteen percent off, and there's also a ten percent off at. Uh, uh, magnetic movement trace. I think it ends today, though, so probably the listeners won't be able to get in on that. Uh, but I, I did at least, uh, so I, I have some more, more movement trace in the coming soon, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and they they regularly do this ten uh, percent, even twenty percent sometimes. I think so. Keep your eyes open for those if you want some awesome movement trace. Um, yeah, and I th think there's one fairly big piece of news too that we should uh, mention. Um, some sort of uh, re release from uh, the Ninth Age with uh, updates for everything. <clears throat> They've entered a new beta phase. Yeah. Uh, you've. Uh, I'm assuming you've looked into that uh, quite a bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good because. They fixed a lot of rules, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it 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 feels like the balance would will be a lot lot better now. I think. Yeah, the balance uh, will be better. Undying dynasties and and uh, vermin swarm needed a needed a quick fix. Uh, a lot of books got some points slower, so yeah. yeah. It was a good update, but at the same time, I can. I can hear hear the frustration for oh not another update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and at the same time though there are people oh, oh couldn't they have done more changes? This is so little. Yeah. So yeah, it's an impossible crowd to please. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I I like it. I've been building more a lot of lists these uh, last days. Uh, yeah. Trying out for both the upcoming Swedish Championship and uh, for uh, the Gates of Games of Westridge in December. Mm. So that will be good. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we should dwell too too much on this. Um, it changes to to get into 
<laughs> the little stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that that the change to Undying Dynasties, uh, their uh, their um, attribute change, was justified. It's a it's a big change and uh, oh. it's it's a big big nerf, but uh, I think it feels it it feels like a good approach. I, I think. For a player that doesn't play them, just plays against them, it feels very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, in the same boat, I suppose I do have an, an, an a Undying Dynasties army incoming from a Kickstarter, uh, uh, but that's uh, that's long down the line, and I won't be playing anything that's good in it. Uh, it's a ter- terracotta, terracotta army, uh. Uh, so it it won't be amazing. Uh, but the uh, what I like about the change is that it it actually incentivizes the Undying Dynasties player to have a more interesting magic phase. Previously, they were so heavily incentivized to just cause cause uh, cause the augments all the time because they got an extra buff from it. Now they can choose to um, to cause the normal spells, damage spells, and such without suffering that. Um, uh, that uh, opportunity cost basically. Yeah, yeah. So I like it too. Uh, I've also heard some people cl- complain that it should have been uh, uh, the the extra uh, casting requirement should only be be applied if you're uh, casting on a on a large unit or g- gigantic, not standard, because the the standard units are are not a problem. Yeah, I can uh, get that, but that's not, that, then they need to add another rule to the rule. And that's yeah, it's a, 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 a more exception and to an exception, yeah. and uh, and it, it, it also I, I'd rather just see them solve that issue with the resurrection values of the skeletons and the and the, yeah. and the standard size yeah. models to make it worthwhile on them instead. Uh, yeah. That's where the issue is, I think, not on the yeah. on the spell. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay, um, shall we move on? Yeah, sure. Uh, to the main topic of the show, mm-hmm. which is the cultists. Yeah. And uh, uh, I will start by saying that this is the <clears throat> the third uh, supplement army released by the Ninth Age, and. It's uh, fairly different from the other two in um, in the scope and the and the, and the yeah and how it's how it's uh, structured because mm-hmm. the first two were for for the warriors of the dark gods so, and they both took a sub theme of the army the barbarians and looked uh, and really focused in on uh, on one uh, barbarian culture each. Yeah. So they took a subset of the faction and uh, and scale up on it. So you basically have a, sort of a fringe army that's less common in the world, basically. With the cultists, it's sort of the opposite. The demon army, that's its uh, its parent parent army. Uh, what it represents is fairly rare in the world in the in the setting, but cultists are everywhere. Yeah. So the most encounters with demons are also encounters with uh, with uh, the cultists, I would say. Yeah. As, as we will see a little bit in the fluff. So um, the background for demons we'll start with. So there's there's basically three ways that a demon can enter the world, and they can. Uh, one is the natural occurrence. Um, so the world has this uh, this veil that separates the mortal 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 realm from the immortal realm. And when when the veil is thin, demons can push through and uh, cause havoc, basically. And in times of great upheaval, natural disasters, and such, the veil gets thinned, and whole armies can appear out of nowhere and uh, cause destruction. And I suppose that's one of the fairly common uh, reasons uh, to play uh, demons in in the game. Uh, you 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 play these armies that just appear out of nowhere. 
Uh, the second way that demons can appear is through summoning. And then there's a cultist to summon them into the world through a ritual. And the third way is through possession, where the, <clears throat> where the demon is... Uh, it, it's not really a way to enter the world. Uh, it's something that they do when they have entered. It can be done... Uh, can happen both naturally and through summoning. But then the the uh, demon takes possession of a a body, a, a mortal uh, creature in the world, and can therefore stay in the mortal realm a lot longer, uh, requiring less energy mm-hmm. to do so. And they can also be summoned into into objects instead, uh, such as swords and uh, <clears throat> and the, uh, there's the store of an of an orb with uh, a sentinel of Nakoya within it in the in the De- Demon Legion's book. Uh, so that's the, the basic uh, fluff, fluff behind the demons. And the cultists, uh, the army, they are focused on the summoning, of course, and also the uh, possession. And how they bring about demons into the world and uh, and fight, fight with them. I guess that uh, in the in the setting, armies of cultists, such as uh, this represents, is not not that common. No. But the cult- cultists themselves are. It's it's stated that they are everywhere. They have have infiltrated pretty much every organization and uh, every civiliza- civilization. Yeah. But but mostly they work in the shadow, not not like uh, having big armies such as this. So that's fairly mm-hmm. rare burn still, still, I think. Yeah. Well, with with the stat line they have, I don't know if you can call them an army. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. Like type Yeah, they are but, they are de- yeah. definitely not soldier soldiers. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I also want to mention that there is another type of cult um, present that worships the, the dark gods. Or well, it's an it's another task of, of these uh, these cultists. <clears throat> so the cultists they they, they serve the uh, the dark gods by enacting uh, their will upon the world. Mm-hmm. And there's also the warriors of the dark gods who sell their soul to a dark god in exchange for personal power and personal gain. They still have to, have to work for the dark gods. Uh, <laughs> Because otherwise they will be abandoned and uh, yeah uh, forsaken forever. So they have they still have to to uh, enact their will, but they do it more for personal uh, personal gain than for uh, for the gods themselves. While the mm-hmm. cu- cultists uh, do it for the gods instead. Of course, they too can have multi layered m- motivations, and they too gain power f- from it. I guess uh, in it they can. Yeah, they can kill stuff with by summoning demons, I suppose. Um, and there's also a, another task for the cults is to enable um, potential warriors to meet with demons and and take this pact and sell their souls, which is described in the in the, in the Wars of the Dark Arts book. So it's quite interesting that uh, the cults they are so prevalent in the fluff. So it's really nice to uh, nice, really nice to have <clears throat> have an army of them finally to um, represent them on the battlefield too. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, I remember that there, it was something that people asked about in, when the Warriors book was released. There was a lot of talk about these uh, cults, but uh, I still didn't re- really know a lot about them, and it it, it felt sort of non-real to the world because you couldn't you couldn't represent them in the in the game <clears throat> but now you can so that's nice um yeah i, I in in the in the De- demon legions book there's there's also quite a lot of talk about different cults uh, you have some uh, cult uh, <clears throat> in the in the bar- barren mountains Dedicated to Sibaresh, and they're basically just a, a big orgy all the time. Uh, 
and uh, yes, it's different cults. I think it was another lust cult in the in the main story that they, they uh, sort of allied with and fought against at the same time. Uh, so yeah, a lot of cults in the in the fluff. Um, yeah, but I, I think that that's a, a basic introduction to to the fluff. So um, shall we move on to some rules? Yeah, those those I, I know more more about. <laughs> than the yeah, you're, you're you're the expert on that area. I, I have uh, studied the fluff a bit more, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, but, I just, but, but, but it, <laughs> it's a it's a good combo. We we cover yeah. different aspect, aspects. So let's scroll down here a bit. Uh, I like this uh, cover art, by the way. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> One of the good things about uh, the, the supplement armies is that they they automatically get some art and uh, and some fluff in in them, mm. like a lot of the slim armies. So, so that that's nice. Yeah, but we we'll, we'll move on. Cultists. <clears throat> Here's some short fluff uh, uh, about that th they being everywhere and uh, yeah their goals and such. Yeah. So, army model rules. Uh, you want to start off with uh, the enemy within. <laughs> yeah, plus six modifier for the role for choosing deployment zone. Uh, yeah. That was a bit of a different one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really unique, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the opponent goes like, you do what? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, th th there are... There's a, a vermin swarm item that gives you plus one to the roll, I think. Yeah. Uh, and maybe something in the hybrid else too, I think. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we 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 don't like el elves, so we don't know. <laughs> uh, but it, so it's it's not unheard of in the rules. But this automatic plus six modifier, so you, you always win the roll, basically. Yeah. That's just crazy. I, I think I. Um, I, I played 23 or 24 games with that yeah. rule, and I have gotten to go first uh, one time. <laughs> ah, yeah, I guess that's the uh, that's the downside. You you always get the pick, uh, yeah, yeah, pick the the deployment zone so the <laughs> opponent can go first. No? Yeah, and I, and I also guess that uh, you you're quite weak. To uh, going second, aren't you? Yeah, we're pretty weak at going second. We we want the demons to come to play, and they well, the rules will cover that later. They they come yeah. at turn two, at the earliest. So yeah, uh, it's it's a big downside. You really want uh, tables with um, with uneven terrain, then. A lot uh, of terrain, also. Yeah. How how did you how did you like to train at uh, at my tournament at the Necronomicon I, Quest? I love your train. Uh, first of all, it's beautiful. All the tables were gorgeous, uh, and there's a lot of train. There's a lot of train that's not the normal train you see on a normal table because it's yeah. always a special, special train piece. And yeah, yeah I, I I just love that. All right, good. it's good to hear. Thank yeah. you. Uh, but did you feel that it was uh, meaningful to to pick the side then? Uh, yeah, uh, more than if you go with the the map packs, uh, they're they're a bit harder <laughs> to play yeah. the cultist army on. But yeah, weak terrain to hide behind because the map yeah. pack sometimes it is like an impassable on one side and a hill on the other side, and that's about it where you can hide. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we yeah, need. Uh, Turns to hide. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and uh, I think the map pack pack is also quite often fairly symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which side you pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is a shame. But I I heard that they they were uh, they are aware of it and uh, might be um, updating it that in the in the future. So I think the the map pack was up updated quite recently actually. Uh, yeah, with some special special scenarios and special maps, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, they had, uh, yeah, the scenario booklet that they released, yeah. Yeah. 
and they and some some uh, uh, terrain rules they also have um, a while ago. Mm. So yeah, that's nice. Okay, so uh, move on, moving on to the next uh, army-wide uh, model. Yeah. Nobody expects. I I like this rule, but uh, I have played against. I think it's like three opponents out of all of my games that chose to take this rule. Uh, all the other ones just ignored it. So. Oh, so yeah, yeah. So the opponent opponent may choose one of the champions yeah, or characters. Yes, so. Yeah. yeah uh, it's not the gonna... or BSP. You get divine attacks, but I gain hatred. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand why, why you wouldn't pick that. Um, it's a funny, fluffy rule, yeah, but yeah. most people just ignore it. And Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess the opponent can't plan for it. I mean, yeah, it's exactly. all, of, all, all, of a, all of a sudden they have, have a new option and they don't know what to do with it, while you, if they choose to use it, you can be prepared for it. Yeah. So most of the time, I, I, it's probably a trap for them, I guess. Excellent. Uh, so maybe I, I like rule, but it needs to change something so the opponent mm -hmm. wants to use it, because at the moment they don't really want to use it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it should be forced. Um, maybe, maybe. But there's not... But, the real army doesn't have a extra character. Oh, well, there's a champion or character, so yeah. yeah most armies have, have one of those, at least. But yeah. uh, uh, Also, maybe it's not that thematic for all the armies. Uh, I mean, if you play, play against demons, say, uh, demon yeah. legions, it, it gets strange, I guess. Yeah, uh, I read all the forums if you play against Empire Solomon's Doll, and they already yeah. have an Inquisitor. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> double Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's... I get the point of it, but it's it doesn't really seem to work. Uh, no. And and it can it's fluffy in the right matchups, but in the wrong matchups it's can feel just strange. I guess the I, I guess an orc inquisitor is a bit funny, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it feels a bit weird too. Yeah. Uh, so we will leave that as it is. <clears throat> yeah. Universal rules pledge to, to darkness. Yeah, this is pretty big. Uh, we have to pay our demons with both points and veal tokens. So we need a lot of veal tokens. And uh, this this rule makes that we can store up to six veal tokens instead of yeah, three. As long as, as there's a normal cultist alive. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's huge. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they can only be joined by Page of Darkness. Yeah, so okay. And then you have this uh, 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 species archetypes. Yeah, and this is beautiful because this means you can use any army, almost any army. Yeah. I think it's like ogres you can't use, but almost any other army you can play as the cultist. Yeah, I, I think I think really think that's the intention that you you have an army, and then you mm -hmm. can just get some demons uh, for for it, and uh, you have a cultist army. You don't need yeah. that many many demons really. Yeah. So it's a nice I, touch. Exactly. Uh, I have only tried out the the, the wayward children and the dishonored because all my molds are on twenty millimeter bases. Uh, yeah. The other two of them are twenty five millimeters. Yeah. Uh, I guess the wayward children are meant to be elves, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Agility and martial art and the fallen he heroes. Uh, I think those are. Uh, uh, orcs or, be, or, or beasters perhaps yeah beasters also do they mi minus one agility uh, that's orcs <laughs> yeah, maybe sauron ancients yeah yeah maybe sauron ancients too yeah that's right yeah. and then the dishonored uh, that's that's dwarfs yeah uh, marsh rate, uh, rate set, set to nine that's dwarfs uh, and the king kinslayer 
maybe that's the the um, uh, beast herds. Yeah. Better at fighting and a larger base. So yeah, that seems to make, make sense. And you have to uh, upgrade all of your units with this if you choose. So. Yeah. Exactly. Some of them are a bit expensive, but it depends on how you want to build your army. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, and it can can lead to really thematic armies, which is cool. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if I, you go, go not yeah. rule. Yeah, I I appreciate this uh, idea that you can just take your army and uh, and, and add some demons and play it as a cultist army. Yeah. But also, if you if you really go into it and build a a dwarf cultist army, how how awesome isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't 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 push that idea because I might do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> feel the cultists flow through you. Yeah. yeah but I, I love that idea to, to really to to really embrace this rule. Yeah. So we like that one. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Oh. And also this you don't have to put one of these four. You can also go just vanilla without yeah. those. Yeah. Which I guess those is you is uh, humans. <laughs> Basically, yeah. because humans in every setting is the vanilla, and then mm. uh, everything else is special because humans are me. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. Uh, but I I don't know how else they would have designed it. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's good. Uh, sacrificial offerings. Yeah. Uh, it lets you, uh, yeah. The, 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 this is something that I should have mentioned in, in the fluff. Um, for uh, summoning, uh, to summon a demon, you need a few things. So, uh, you need, I guess, some some inc inc incantation and, and magic, basically. But you also need uh, stuff to build the demon from. Often this is brimstone and other things, um, but you can use use other components to to get stronger demons. Basically, I think uh, 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 quicksilver, uh, mercury is quite common too in the fluff. And then the final component that you need is you need need a sacrifice, an offering, and this rule basically represents that. Uh, so what does it allow you to do? It gains you plus one cast. Uh, you you kill a mall in the unit you are standing in, uh, and it gives you plus one cast. This 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 uh, this is an easy rule, and yeah, I use this every game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, um, but you have to decide to use it before the cost. Yeah, before the before you call. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, it would be way too powerful, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, it's still a nice ability um, to really get those those powerful spells through, I, I guess. Which yeah. we'll, we will see that they have have available when we mm. scroll down. Uh, so this is a, a really fluffy rule, I think. Uh, it um, it captures the <clears throat> the sacrificial aspect of yeah. of uh, summoning. Yeah, this, this is one of the best rules. It's it's fluffy, it's easy, and yeah, I I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Uh, one of the the, uh, the in the main story of the of the Demon Legends book, uh, the the cult there, they they uh, they they are in in a city and they make an uprising and take control of the city basically. And they use the demons mm -hmm. and the cult to create sort of a utopia. That's uh, really awesome, and everybody's happy. But to uh, to sustain it, they need to keep sacrificing people. So eventually, they they start <laughs> sacrificing the, the the citizens basically, <laughs> and it's it's not that great actually. <laughs> so I, I liked how that uh, how it's turned against them, and and this is the same feel that you you do some damage to your yeah. own uh, army, and you get more powerful spells. So that's cool. Uh, okay. So, time for the, the main feature of the army, I guess, the uh, demonic summon. Yes. Uh, well, this is basically the way you get your demons. First, you have to 
pay the points in your list. But yeah. uh, when you summon, you choose a unit from the summon demons category in your army list. Uh, you discard a number of deal tokens from your real token pool. Uh, divided by 200. So, yeah, it's one wheel token for every 200 points. Yep. Uh, then you place the unit in a legal formation fully within 12 inches of the model that performs summon. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. You can't move it, the unit after because it's the end of the movement phase uh, and it counts as having moved for shooting. Yeah, so, so it's basically a... a, a a way to deploy you don't uh, yeah. it's the only way to get your demons on the, on the battlefield and it's it's a it's a way to deploy them basically yeah and i love the way it works uh, you can get your you, you can most cases you can really pick your fights uh, yeah i guess that's the, the the big advantage advantage of it yeah and uh, there's easy to chaff units also uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Summon some shafts in front of it. Yeah. And it's it's in the yeah it's in a in a moment phase and it's not even even a spell so it can't be dispelled or anything. You just do uh, it. Too. Yeah. yeah I, it. I, I think this works the way it should. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I want to say about it is, is that I don't like. It. Is that mm -hmm. the the ma main rule book ha has a a section uh, that's uh, with rules for summoning, and these <laughs> rules don't, rules <laughs> don't use different. those. This this is something different. <laughs> uh, I think that's yeah. that's a problem. It's it, it's mm -hmm. not pretty, uh, but these rules are really good. I like these rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I I would rather they just remove those rules from the uh, main rule book or change the mm -hmm. name or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's it's not a big issue. It's just not this is not a normal summoning. This is a demonic summoning. Yeah, <laughs> big, big, big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually yeah. had some th some thoughts about adding this uh, to uh, to skirmish uh, as well. Uh, and in that case, uh, I will remove the, uh, the 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 common summoning rules from the main rule book because there's so little things that summon in that in that game. So I, I'll work that out uh, in each case instead. Yeah. But yeah, this rule is fluffy and it really works because you can move your unit. So there's there's a pretty large range because you can move the model that's supposed to do the summing, and then it's the whole unit has to be twelve inches of that. So it's pretty, it's long. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I guess when you can take uh, what's it the, the wayward children and get some extra movement on your uh, on your dudes as well. Yeah, some have have a lot of movement, so yeah, you you can is it movement six, advanced six, or March twelve? I think you can go up to. Yeah. So yeah, twenty four inches is. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. And they keep scoring as long as it, they don't come on on game four or later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, game yeah. turn. Uh, so yeah, that's that's good. And it's good to have, have it uh, to, to have that limitation too, because it would be really silly if they could yes pop up in the last turn and uh, and win the game. Basically, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Me mechanics without a counterplay <laughs> is not fun. So no. That's and uh, that's that's one of the good reasons also for demons because. Uh, <laughs> a normal unit gets two turns of uh, shooting and magic against it, and this is like you can you can pop your uh, your chaff without scratch on them. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, and also the fighter units make sure that the, the glass cannons make sure that they don't get a lot of shooting on them yeah. as well. They get maximum one turn shooting, and then it's time to yeah. fight. And and then you will. Almost certainly get a charge, uh, unless you're, you're shaped, of course. But yeah. but yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, okay. 
So um, that's the last of the uh, model rules and such. Uh, so we have the hereditary spell, which is the uh, Spear of Infinity from the Demon, Demon Legions. Yeah. Uh, did you find this useful in the army? I used it probably half of my games, and yeah, it's a cheap spell uh, that can do some wounds. So yeah, I, I used it. It's not bad. It's not it's not the main spell that you use, but yeah, it's useful. It's useful. Okay. And I, that sounds, yeah. sounds pretty, pretty good then, uh, what, what, yeah. pretty much where you want it to be. Yeah. Not an out include and not not um, <clears throat> out to exclude as well. Mm. Uh, so uh, artifacts, uh, they have these two in addition to the common artifacts, so pretty slim selection. No, they also have some um, extra options with the general. Oh yeah, 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 we'll see general, yeah, yeah, that's so, right. So it's 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 a bit compensated. You're, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so what a <clears throat> what do these two do? Uh, Life for Talisman. I actually never use this one. It's uh, when you miss cost. Uh, you you can get a plus mo- one or minus one modifier to the miss cost uh, for D3 wounds to your unit. So it's to keep your maybe general or main wizard alive. Uh, by by killing, more, killing more dudes yeah, in your unit. Dudes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cheap, but it's dominant, which is a it's problem. I, I didn't even notice that, but yeah, I I I didn't use it because no, ah. I, it feels these kind of items that uh, that um, make you better at doing bad things. Yeah, it's always an issue because it's better to just not do the bad thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's it's unavoidable, of course, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's strange to plan for getting miscast. So. Well, your general can take thaumaturgy, and yeah, yeah. if you're yeah. fordizing thaumaturgy often, you might use this. But yeah, mm. yeah, I guess that's the that, that's the build. If you if you go all in for the thaumaturgy, uh, yeah. then it's then it's really useful, I guess. So the brainstorm bracer. Bracer, yeah, this one is great. I love it because uh, you get an extra real token, and yep. the bearer, if it, it gets demonic summoning, and if he already has it, he can summon two units this phase. <laughs> it's yeah. one, one use only, yeah. Uh, yeah, one okay. use only. Oh, and it, and it's uh, activated at the, at the start of the movement phase, so if you if you so really need that uh, summoning a, this turn. Yeah, and then you get a unit that's really uh, in a bad spot. You can like, yeah, I'll pop this and get another chef unit. And yeah, hey, you're chef. It's, it's, uh, it's an uh, emergency tool, I guess. It's an emergency uh, wheel token. Uh, but yeah. if you build your list to this item, you can... Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect then. Uh, I, I love the way it works and I used it every day. All right. Yeah, that's cool. So maybe a bit too good then, perhaps? But uh, yeah. No, it's a one use only. Yeah, I guess that's uh, that balances up. Yeah, because for one use only 35 points. Mm. Yeah, it's fairly expensive still. Yeah. And you already pay the points for the unit you use it on. Yeah. So, and some 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 games also I had <laughs> models with demonic summoning that died, and then also the extra unit you can summon was also worth it. Yep. All right. Uh, so we shall move on to army organization. Uh, 35% characters, <clears throat> that's normal core, 25% normal, and 45% summon, summon demons. So yeah. almost ha- half your army can be, can be demons. That's that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's uh, characters, well, <laughs> that's the only, only one I've almost gone over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess it's not... Uh, 
mm. the, the, the d- demon limit is not that uh, big an issue, I think, because if you have four to five percent demons, you have so little on the table when you when you begin the game that it's it's a bit dangerous, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yep, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so the cult leader. Yeah, one, the one with one, a lot of rules. Yeah, 180 points. Uh, so that's yeah, not that high, not that low. It's a wizard adept from the start. Yeah. And it can become a wizard master for <clears throat> another 150 points. I think yeah. that's that is something you take all the time, I guess. No, I I took oh. the tournament. I did not take a wizard master. Oh, I see. Cool. Because uh, the reason is he's unstable, and um, we will see later that uh, there's a lot of units in core. A lot of units. The, the units in core are also unstable, yep. but the units in special are supernal. Uh, and if you have a model with unstable in a supernal unit, you don't get the supernal rule. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> the big problem. And if he's a general, wizard master, uh, in the core units, uh, they also have frenzy without the option of a BSB. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, that's a real issue. Uh, no That's reason. a big issue. So yeah, in my test games, he died every single game, either to frenzy or just because he was in a in a small unit behind the lines and the <laughs> opponent. So I kept him as cheap as I could, actually. <laughs> so yeah. I just ran him as a wizard adapt, but okay. I took the master ritual uh, and. Uh, yeah, Ooh. that's a big rule. <laughs> uh, extra di- di- discipline. I, I I was just thinking maybe the uh, the crown of autocracy is a good option on this uh, this guy, but uh, with yeah. the dis- discipline nine on the on the master of ritual, that's yeah, uh, that's and decent. it's an eighteen inch commanding presence also. Then yeah, that's great. Too. So yeah, this, if you take him, he has to be a general. If you take the master of ritual, yeah. Uh, so you get a 18 inch ball of discipline nine, uh, and you also gain the, the the demonic summoning, so he can summon demons. Oh, he can't otherwise. He can't otherwise. No. That's oh, okay. That's interesting. And against scout as well. Yeah, I actually <laughs> use that. <laughs> that's odd. <laughs> well, you have a core unit that also. Can take scout, so it just gave me some of the games an option to scout the unit just to have less models when it's like a, a, a scenario where you put three units down before all units. Yep. So it gave me an option to go first, maybe, <laughs> or just give opponents like a plus three to the roll off. Yeah, that's that's a neat tactic. Yeah. Um, all right, so it also gains uh, access to a lot of uh, extra options. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, we'll, we'll go, go through them all. The first is for Father Chaos, and you get a, a Veilwalker from the Wars of the Dark Arts. Yeah. So basically, you can use the Veil tokens to make your spells more powerful. Yeah. That's, and that's it, the. It, yeah, if you go with a with a wisdom monster, yeah, I can definitely see you taking this one. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's good. Uh, the tablet tablet of Asharuk, I can't recall mm-hmm. what that that thing does. Do you know? Uh, you uh, wait in the opponent's magic phase during siphon a veal before converting veal tokens into magic dice. Remove one wheel token from your opponent's veal token pool and add one veal token to your veal token pool. Okay. So you get more tokens, and they get less. Yeah, but for, for 70 points. Yeah, that's a bit expensive. That's a bit expensive. So that's a no for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amulet of Spite from the Dreadlands. 
Right. Yeah, you gain another magic dice, but you lose one in your opponent's magic phase. Oh, so you you go all all offense, no defense. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, exactly. And that could be cool. Could work, yeah. Because well, the first two turns it's just to contest the dice. So yeah, could work. I have not yeah. used it. But yeah, I can I can see it working. Yeah. Because it's pretty cheap. Also. It's just forty points. Yeah. Uh, then we have the Ledger of Souls for Gluttony uh, from the Wars of the Dark Gods, and that's the one where you get uh, Veil tokens for slain models within uh, some range of the of the yeah. bear, bearer, isn't it? Seventy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Seventy-five points, and I thought this was perfect item uh, until an opponent uh, lectured me on the rules. Because you can only get up to six veal tokens in your pool outside the magic phase. Yeah, and they already have so many. Yeah, uh, so 75 points, nah, no, because you can't rely on it either. If your opponent knows this rule and you, you empty your veal token pool and he knows this rule, he's just not going to kill the most within 12 inches of you. Yeah, I guess. And then you're in a bad spot because you need your demons. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yep, so maybe not the best one. Uh, Ancient Black for Sloth. Ancient Black. Yeah, this is, you may reroll a single magic dice when casting a spell, provided the spell was not a miscast. That's good. It's pretty good, yeah. No question about it. 75 points, though. It's quite expensive. Yeah, um, but it uh, it doesn't have the problem of uh, you uh, overloading with uh, with uh, whale tokens, which I think the the cultists can have. Um, they get too many, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's good. <laughs> you actually can. Um, greed, second awakening from the Wormy Swarm. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, that's the one. When you cast a spell type damage, you can. Uh, yeah, you can you, reroll those items, Yeah. For for number of hits. Yeah, exactly. That can be fun. That can be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, that can be fun. Fifty-five points. But you don't really have that many options for the damage spell. There's there's occultism, thaumaturgy, and witchcraft, which have doesn't have any damage spells, right? Nope, none. And the spear of infinity is just one hit, isn't it? Yeah, it's one exactly. area, so, area attack. Yeah. Love, love the item, but the the passive magic we can choose for it is hmm, yeah, it's a bit limited. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a shame. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it's a really cool item. It, it, it's it's su- such a unique ability uh, to, yeah. to modify spells in that way. Yeah, uh, looking for the test also. Yeah. Okay, so wrath. That's skull fetish from the Ox Goblins. This is a yeah. great item uh, in yeah. the Ox Goblin army. Uh, if I can fit it, I use it when I play Ox. But it's often that I can't. Yeah. Same for me. I love the item, but it really doesn't really work for the cultists because we need those wheel tokens really early, early. game. Yeah. yeah so, and nah. this, yeah. It's it's great for those goblins because they, they they really like those uh, the, those combat buffs and the turn that you really need need them. You have a lot of things in combat, so you uh, you get the the spells basically. Yeah. Uh, we should uh, now. I jumped ahead. I think we should say what it does. You get uh, veil tokens for every uh, every combat that's uh, going on at, at the table, and you you can't gain more than three, and you gain one less for every unit that that have that is fleeing. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Mm. And the last one, lust, unholy tome. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, bounce spell. Yeah, it's a bounce spell, dance cover. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is good, I think. You have access to witchcraft, so you can yeah. double up on a on a magic move spell, which is always good. Yeah, and you also have access to invocation through the the, the other characters. Yeah. Uh, so you, yeah, you can 
you can get a get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Uh, I I actually tried uh, a game uh, this Friday, where mm-hmm. I had 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 two uh, magic move spells, and it's good, but it's it's kind of the, the same thing that I said earlier with the miscast. Using magical move sp- spells. Mm-hmm. Unless you have you have uh, sort of um, these uh, slashing attacks, so. mm. you kind of um. have to put yourself in a b- bad position, and then plan on getting a spell through and getting a good position. It's yes. often better be- better to just put yourself in a good position. But but it's, the cultists are always in a bad position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, uh, it's it's a hail mary. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's I find it really hard to plan uh, mm. to use uh, have a, have a battle plan to use uh, the uh, the movement spells. But when you need them, you really need them. Um, yeah. The last turn, tournament uh, tournament I went to, I I, I also... pulled off some some things with magic mo- moves that was just uh, yeah, it, it wasn't possible otherwise. <laughs> safe to say. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it. The but... option to have... Yeah. No, they can do a magic move. That's. Yeah. I think my, my you, favorite. You are... that one. Of yeah, can you repeat that? You uh, became a robot. Oh, yeah. oh I became a robot. Uh, I, I said that uh, when you have three spells, you can almost always count on one of them getting through. Yeah, de- definitely. Mm-hmm. That's the. <laughs> do you know what's better than than two <laughs> uh, magic move spells? <laughs> Three magic move spells, <laughs> of course. Um, so I think my my favorites here is uh, Father Chaos and Pride. The, the going boss to the wall, all out magic with uh, Amnet yeah. of Spite sounds awesome to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But as you say, may, maybe it's it's uh, wiser to just keep it cheap. Yeah, the, uh, I. I tried the, the expensive one, but with witchcraft you can't really do that much, and occultism is the, the low range. Is it, it works better with Wee Walker, yeah, but I find it found it that he he died so many games, so keep him cheap with the master ritual. Uh, also use the brimstone brazier on him. Yeah, yeah. So in the tournament you didn't have any of this. Uh, I, I had one cult leader just at yeah. Okay, so so you, you didn't get any of this uh, extra eight um, no, options. No, no, just the brainstorm. Uh, I, I have tried the wheel walker in other games. I have tried the uh, 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 ledger souls but, also. Yeah, but I played it wrong. So <laughs> when I played it wrong, it really worked. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the secret. <laughs> All right. Uh, we can also see that we have the options here for uh, Pledge of Darkness with the Wayward Children, Fallen Hero, Disarder, and Kingslayer. And Kingslayer is free. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We shall move on to the uh, Demon Symbiote. Yeah. And, uh... Which, from a fluff perspective, is uh, a quite interesting entry because. Uh, it's possible to to possess uh, mortal uh, people with uh, demons, and then the mortal becomes a lot stronger, and uh, uh, the demon can stay in the world for a long time. This is sort of the same thing, but it's uh, not a, it, as it says, it's not a temporary possession, but a single conjoined en- entity. Um, so it's it's a more permanent fusion of um, demon and, and mortal. So I think it's a in the fluff, it's a really, really powerful force, especially if you have a good, if you have a strong mortal and the and a strong demon, it's um, it's really scary. Yeah, but you can see it's that life. They are pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's one of the the few people that can fight in this army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, With five attacks. Yeah. Four attacks, strength five. He, yeah. He, he puts it out. He, he's. Uh, Around a, a vampire uh, level of damage, mm. I guess. Yes. And the big thing is, he's supernal. 
so he Ooh. can be in your supernal units. Uh, yeah, that's what we'll see. Uh, the, 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 the only thing I don't like about this one is uh, yeah. the lore, the magic lore. I would love to switch. Yeah, I would love to to have occultism on him. Uh, yeah, I occult- can, yeah, I understand that. Um, occultism really boosts boosts the caster a lot, and uh, it's uh, much more worthwhile to boost this guy than a cult leader. Yeah, and also the the ranges. This this guy is in the front lines. The cult leader is in the back lines often. Uh, yeah. So I, I would like my personal preference to switch evocation against occultism with the cult leader, because the cult leader can run evocation. Yeah. I don't know how that works with the fluff, but it sounds um, really awesome. <laughs> no the fluff. G- g- no, game perspective. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. The uh, oh, none of them have. I would have kind of guessed that the, the uh, symbiote would have. Um, Divination. I feel fluff-wise that would be a pretty good mm-hmm. fit because the divination yeah. is, is really the, the demon path. Yeah. In a true. lot of ways. But um, yeah, they didn't didn't go that way. Um, I seen that a lot of people are keen on the, on the idea of really just spamming these guys, so having like five of them in the army. Um, I don't know if that will work, though. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, but they're also pretty expensive. Yeah, I guess we saw the apprentice from the start, uh, which is not yeah. useful. Uh, and they they can't summon demons. Nope. No, they cannot summon demons. Oh, but they can t- take a single non-guiding manifestation from de- the Demon Legion's yeah, army. Yeah, that's, yeah they, that's a lot of options. Yeah, <laughs> uh, co- combined with the 100 points of special items, man, what a lot of combos you can make, get, get here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me personally, I took the one that gives enemy unit in base contact minus two agility. That's neat. Uh, on yeah. a, on a, a guild six model, so you're effectively yeah. guild eight. <laughs> exactly. That's sweet. <laughs> Chilling yawn. Yeah, that's yeah. that's good. Uh, and I, I had two. Uh, I, I took the other yeah. one with a great and, and like reflexes. Ooh. Yeah, I think I would li- 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 like to, sit to to try build with the wayward children. And then yeah. take his centipede legs to just uh, you get to 14 march movement. Yeah, <laughs> just, just because it's stupid. <laughs> but this guy can also take the, the one use item only for uh, summoning, also. Oh, so you can, so you can get, run, uh, yeah, yeah. Run, a, a summoning torpedo, run out and Ex- summon something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Probably and not worth it. No, but. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the important part. Yeah, uh, he also has heavy armor and uh, five plus ages, so you can make him pretty tanky also uh, with the yeah. option of shield and magic items. So yeah. yeah. No, no mount. But he gets expensive. No, no mounts. Uh, there's no mounts in the entire army. Yeah, and I, I, I know that you, you have some, some thoughts about that. We'll, we'll get into that yeah. <laughs> yeah. later. Mm. Um. But yeah, it's a really cool model, really powerful, and a, a lot of options and combos available. Exactly. Options are always good. <laughs> yep. It seems that the, the, this uh, this army has quite a lot of them. Mm. Uh, so we shall uh, move on, I think. Um, yep. Yeah. To the core. Yeah. 25%. So this is the basic... Cultist. Yeah, this is the only unit in core, unless you take core from the demons, but also. Uh, yeah. So we'll need a few of these, I think. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, they're pretty cheap, uh, and they have frenzy. <laughs> yeah, that's an, interesting, <laughs> that's an interesting detail. 
<laughs> and, they, and they can't yeah. fight to save their lives, I guess. They have yeah. devastating such battle well, focus. If you take, uh, you can take, so you get Resilience 4, and then they can, yeah. they're yeah, unstable. So yep. I, I just like to call them zombies on speed. Because, yep. yeah. I see. Fair enough. They have, yeah, that thing for battle focus, uh, why, why not? <laughs> <laughs> It's not bad. It's just not that no, good. But, I, but, I doubt. I, I doubt it co costs them many points. It wouldn't be much no. cheaper if they didn't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're there for your sacrifices. <laughs> if you take a cultism, yeah. perfect unit sacrifice from. Uh, if yeah. you want to put one to cast, it's perfect. But this is the unit. If you take a cult leader. He has to stand in almost. He can stand in the other units, but this is the unstable unit. So yeah, yeah. It's an interesting call to make him un unstable, really. Yeah, uh, I, I understand why, because he's a human, and these are the human ones without. Yeah. But oh, he really needs supernova. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, you have three uh, options. For this. Yeah, uh, uh, Eldritch Tome, Wizard Conclave, and you know the Spear of Infinity. Yeah. Uh, uh, something to note about Wizard Conclave, you or you gain uh, Channel One with that one as well, don't you? No. Oh yeah, you get a yeah. Kind you're you're not you're, you're not adept. You're adept. So you yeah, but only one spell. Yeah, yeah, adept with one spell and but still, still channel, so that's. Mm. Uh, but it's 80 points for that one. Yeah, it's always quite expensive to become a, yeah. a Wizzy Conclave. But uh, throwing out Spears of Infinity with core units, not the yeah. worst option? No, the low, the low cost uh, can, can yeah, be worth it, yeah. Yeah, for uh, 185 points minimum unit. <laughs> <laughs> Just spamming yeah. hundreds of those. <laughs> that could be interesting. Uh, maybe not hundreds, but... Yeah. Uh, unholy Conduit, you get channel one and the ability to summon demons. Uh, yeah, yeah I, took, I, I took two units of these because you need multiple options to be able to summon from. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I had two of these because for 70 points, they're worth it. They're, they're going to die turn three, turn four, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Gives you a great, great channeling and the ability to summon. Yes. Uh, and the third option. <laughs> Scout. Yeah. Scouts and the scoring. Uh, I have one of these also. Uh, th this is your chaff turn one and turn early turn two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's they're, they're cheap, but you almost always have to run them with their backs to the enemy because the frenzy <laughs> yep. frenzy is hard. <laughs> yeah, that's silly. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. What's this uh, sacrificial offerings? It's uh, bolded yeah. in the model rules. That, that's the cult leader's option. He can sacrifice one model. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's on the on the on the uh, on the t uh, on what is possible to sacrifice, not on the, the, the dude that can make it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see. Yeah. Um, and it can take a musician. No weapon options. No weapon options. So yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and again, a standard bear with the with the unholy conduit also. Yeah. So. With the tome, they gain a champion, maybe also. Uh, uh, yeah, with the with the eldritch tome, you get a champion. Yeah, so you you, you cannot have everything at at once, but you do have options for all of them. That's true. Uh, okay. So I. Hmm. I was th th thinking about how you could use this. Hmm. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, you can take some uh, Demon Legion units from yeah. War 2. Yeah, I choose the, uh, what's the name, Lemures, the Resilience 5 models. Yeah, yeah, those are good. You can need yeah. some tanks, tanks in this uh, army, I guess. Yeah, 
<laughs> needs something to, to hold the yeah. enemy down. Uh, but there's no, that's pretty easy to fill up core. Uh, you take three to four units of the cultist, uh, and then that's one awesome. unit from the demon book, and then your core is settled. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and you can take some some uh, additional models and manifestations. Uh, how how expensive do you do you usually go with the the demon? Well, that, that's that's you, this this you have to plan because you know how much how many real tokens they will cost. So I yeah. For a big unit, I still try to keep them under 600 points, so it costs maximum three real tokens to get them yeah. to play. Uh, that that's that's a lot of listing you have to do because there's a lot of units that cost like uh, 205 points, and then it that's oh. yeah, and, and then then you might as well go to go up to the 300 points right. and get get your your miles worth basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that must be a really tricky component of the of the list building because I can also imagine if you have some twenty points left and yeah, I, I add another miniature here to this this unit and then suddenly it goes over over the the, the limit and you have to use another token to summon them and that's not great. <laughs> so it's a lot of things to keep keep in mind, I suppose. Um, yeah, but we will move on to special to yeah. the. Second uh, infantry unit uh, of yeah, basically cultists that you can have. Yeah, these I love. <laughs> the possessed. Yeah, they yeah. are. They are quite quite brutal. Yeah, uh, but zero to two units per army. <laughs> yeah, understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can have up to twenty five models. That's not a lot. A lot really. That's not a lot. No, of, a lot it's of the same with the cultists. It's also a maximum of twenty-five models per unit, so you know it's not yeah. big unit. It's a it's an uh, MMU MMU uh, yeah. army really, multiple medium. I units. think it, I think it's capped that way just because the option to take resilience four. Uh, uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. doing resili resilience four on this is quite cool. Uh, and then you can take. Uh, some manifestations, sitting scales, red haze, and centipede legs. Oh, centipede legs for that 12 movement. <laughs> 12, 12 it's march. Cheap also. Yeah, one point per model. And and uh, sitting scales is that a, uh, a five up armor? Yeah, you get a four up because you have light armor. Oh right. yeah, okay, that's With nice. The four up, five up. That's pretty tanky actually. That, that's what I choose chose for one of my units. I took them with great weapons and scales. Uh, yeah. But uh, all the units they fought had AP three or four, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's always annoying. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, red. My, my, yeah. Red, red haze. Red, red haze. Yeah. Uh, and what does uh, that do again? Uh, plus one strength. So strength yeah. five, but Ooh. when you roll to hit, all the ones hit yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I know. <laughs> this was my my best unit, the the unit I loved the most. I had twenty five possessed with spears and red haze. Which, yeah, two yeah, attacks so per model, uh, and then I had the character with minus two agility in the same unit. So they had an effective agility of uh, eight. Yeah, when they were charged. Yeah, and yeah when they, they were charged. Were charged seven. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, killers. That's a nice combo. That's a nice yeah. combo. <laughs> so I this couldn't is a... hide them in all the rooms though. So all the people yeah. they saw it and they shot them to death. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh... All right, so the last unit, no, they have one more. Uh, so the Ritual Altar. Yeah, uh, this is a must have. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, it is. For 210 points, you get the Wrath of God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's That's a sort of a w war machine, basically. Uh, it doesn't yeah, have that rule. A war machine. No, yeah. and it's standard also size. Yeah. 
uh, but it, but it's a uh, it's a big uh, chunk that sits in the back of your lines, basically, and costs uh, basically uh, mm-hmm. wrath, of, wrath of God. Yeah, either behind your lines with your army, or on the other side of the board, uh, you have your yeah. army in one corner and this in the other corner, because this because has that- demonic. It has uh, demonics. Oh, yeah. So if you if it gets in a in, in a pickle, you can summon some demons and defend it. Yeah, exactly. And so you, you, yeah, the, the the enemy is kind of has to to focus quite a lot of attention to to get r- rid of it. Yeah. Basically, he, he can't run a small unit and just no. run. And, oh, yeah. it has seven uh, HP and eight is five plus resilience four. So it's yeah. uh, not that easy to take down. It doesn't fight that much in combat though, but. Um, no, no, no. And, and the Pendulum of Pain is also one of the reasons you take it on the other side of the board. Because um, uh, if you look at the, the, the last line, the range yeah. for by the small are doubled. That's a yes, 20 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it has Wrath of God and Pentagon of Pain, and that's with the 24 inch bubble. Uh, yeah, even if you are on the other side of the board, you might hit some of your own units. Yeah. But it's just <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, I say, I suppose uh, that's that's cool. That's really cool. It's also with an add up, so you get channel one from it. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. So <laughs> for the points of 210 points, <laughs> this is Ooh, very small. And it has sacrificial offerings, so for the yes. really powerful, for, for Wrath of God, yeah. it can it can cause a, a hit on itself yeah. and get. And then you do a Pentagon of Pain, and you make it a big one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it can self heal, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Uh, yeah. it's, it might be a bit too cheap, but. It, it feels like you know, an option. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, zero to one unit, so you can only have one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. And the last unit, the profane idol, which is basically a giant. You can make this almost any monster you want. Uh, yeah, I with guess. The op, you can change the the base size. Uh, you can change the models for pretty much. But yeah, it's a strength five. Resilience five monster with five attacks. Uh, and it's super null. Plus. Yeah, and it's super null. Uh, yeah. yeah, pretty fast mm-hmm. too. Um, and then a Doomsday Colossus it can get the, an extra health points and uh, a larger base. Yeah, it, that's basically the, the giant option for Big Brother. Yeah. It's the same. And then uh, a post state automaton. It gains mm-hmm. even tank. It gets even tankier. Yeah. Damn. This is nice. Crush Four up ar- armor and resilience six. That's that's thank you. <laughs> but ninety points extra also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the wicker man. It gains flaming attack and flammable. Uh, and it causes uh, flaming attacks hits in base contact. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I don't know if it's, that's good, if it's that good. It's just 35 points, so it's pretty cheap. Yep, I guess. And then uh, Heretic Golem. Plus one strength, plus one AP. Okay. Yep. The, I, I like it. But, um, I, I, I haven't used this one many games. No. Uh, I feel that it should have an option to be some sort of wizard, I think, maybe. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, but it's a lot of points, and uh, when you put this down, <laughs> everything in the opponent's army is going to look at it and go, oh, I'm going to kill that one. Yeah, because you don't have anything on the table, the dangerous exactly. on the table yet. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. The only dangerous model, except the spearman, maybe, that's on the yeah. table. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it draws a lot of attention that um, mm-hmm. yeah we can't gain that much worth from, mm. I guess. So that's the end of the units. Now we have uh, more summoned demons from special yeah. and Aves categories. 
Yeah. Uh, I think we should we have a little look at what's available uh, and what's good. It's like, yeah, it's almost everything without the characters. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't take uh, gigantic stuff at all. Can um, you? Uh, well, you, you. What is it? Brazen and Beast isn't that gigantic? Maybe it's not. No, uh, the the Hope Harvester is a gigantic. I think yeah. so. That one you can't take. Uh, let's see, demon, demon, demon. Yeah, I, on another note, I finished the ethereal stuff on the, uh, <coughs> on the spectral hunters now. And I, mm. yeah, I don't think I will start on the, on the black just yet. So I just, uh, look at some rules now. Uh, yeah, a lot of manifestations. We won't look into everything. There's so many combos. No. Uh, core, we have imps, succubi, lemurs, and myrmidons. And I think you're right that lemurs is the one you want. Yeah, it's a big unit, costs a lot of points, and can tank almost anything. Yeah, the, the tanking is really important. You, you got a lot of hammers in the special yeah. section, and um, I think that's more effective. Way of spending the your points. Imps feels really useless. Um, yeah. You don't need more medic users, and the, the shooting is. Why why would you want shooting units to turn turn two and onwards? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Suck you by sure against the right target. They are uh, murderous. Mm. And the same thing with myrmidons. But uh, yeah. as we said, they're probably better options in special. Yeah, but there is, you can <laughs> almost always pick your fights, so maybe... Yeah, that's, that's true. You can uh, can really tailor them against some uh, yeah. special opponent and uh, be fairly sure to get that mat matchup. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, uh, so uh, well, you can start in your end. What, what do you normally use? What did you use at the tournament? Uh, I put claw fiends um, with uh, unhinged jaw. Uh, I took six of them, and that put the unit above 600 points. So it it cost four real tokens to get to the board. Uh, yeah. In 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 games, I will use the cultists. I, I will try to keep them under 600 points, but that means five models instead of six. Yeah, uh, and that's but. Not that's good. The unhinged jaw is that one that gets you uh, extra damage. Reroll against. against... Uh, Reroll yeah. to wound against large and gigantic. Oh, so they are real monster hunters. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 some games they didn't do anything, but uh, two games they, they, they were the best unit on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Pick the fight we wanted and just go straight through it. Uh, yeah, he went right, right through a unit of ticket beasts and one went right through a unit of uh, uh, dragon ogres. What? Um, uh, Felrax. Felrax, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. So, yeah, they are powerful. You also yeah. had some uh, hellhounds, didn't you? Yeah, because uh, of the points. Uh, yeah. 170 points. Uh, I took hot blood. Because it's so cheap, and if I go into a unit of elves, they're yeah, going to do a lot. Yeah, it's the extra agility uh, on the charge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's good. For 175 points per per chaff, and they can do some real damage with lethal strike and a lot of attacks. So yeah. multi-purpose unit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, I'm. Curious about the threshing, threshing engine and the uh, Titan Slayer chariot. It's a shame that it's 205 points uh, for the Titan Slayer. Titan Slayer. Um, but I, I yeah, really yeah. like like that model. In, in it, it's, that's that's it one feels... of the units I looked at. 205 points. I really five points for. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's one of those those units that's really tailored against a specific specific foe. Yeah, I guess you can t take it instead of the uh, of the uh, Claude Fiends, though. Mm. I, I think they they are the better option, but it's I I, I like this model. 
this yeah. uh, unit. So uh, I tried to play with a treasure engine in some games also, and I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and you need a big version, and then it gets expensive with real tokens. Yeah. yeah that's so I, I need did a, a small two. one. I took roaming hands on a small one, and then it's 200 points exactly, so it's a real token to get out, but yeah. didn't do anything. Ro- roaming hands, what, uh, what does that do? Roaming hands, what was that? Uh, 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 plus yeah. one string when used flank or rear facing. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah that's good, but um, if you can summon it in the, in, in the flank, uh, I guess it's yeah. quite re- useful, but yeah. Um, let's see. Adelons, Aed- I think, are just not good enough. Yeah. Also, a shooting unit is not that useful late game. <clears throat> uh, Titan Slayer, Mage Blight, not useful. They have their uh, their. Uh, what makes mains. them good? Yeah. Yeah. Their they, they, yeah. They, they miss out on their ambush rules, so that's uh, it's a waste, really. Fiends are good. Hoarders. Yeah, uh, I I was I was thinking, but when I have lemurs, I felt that hoarder and lemurs that mm, I needed something that was faster and could really hit something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you take uh, myrmidons or succubi in in core, uh, you can go for yeah. for uh, the tank and special, and then the hoarders the the guys for the job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, quite expensive though. Yeah, this is I, the same problem. If you take six, you're over 600 points, so it's yeah. four real tokens. Mm-hmm. And four is a lot, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Sirens, uh, the smallest unit is uh, under 200. Yeah. But uh, I I'd rather think. Uh, I don't really know what a unit of five is supposed to do. It's a shaft uh-huh. unit, but. Uh, doesn't feel so both, useful. Both both, both uh, sirens and and uh, uh, hellhouse works in bigger units, but uh, mm, mm, nah. Yeah. Uh, blazing glories. Can you take those? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, I yeah I tried one one game. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, that, that feels like it should be really awesome. Yeah, I like the Blazing Glories, but they also they they have this uh, Falling Star, so they they really don't want to want to be damaged when they get into combat. But if you can summon them right in front of the enemy, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. And isn't that one that's stubborn if you challenge or something? Yeah, in a duel. Yeah, in a duel. yeah, in a duel it's stubborn. So that's that's nice too. Yeah, stubborn with supernova is pretty good. <laughs> I wonder what. Brimstone consecration is not that worth it. Cloven hooves, uh, that's impact hits. Eh. Horns of hubris. Uh, these are the pride ones. We can go check. Stiff upper lip. Uh, it's good. Yeah. yeah, basically. Uh, bronze backbone is hatred. That's always good. And yeah. uh, horns of hubris is not, not worth it. So I guess bronze backbone is the one you would go for. Yeah. And it's still, it's two veal tokens, so yeah. Yeah, not too expensive. It can give him, let's see. Oh, if you go br- uh, bronze backbone, you can't uh, give him fly and still still be two. But I think fly no. is uh, not, not, not necessary when you can summon. No. So I, th- I think that's a neat, neat option. Um, Hope Harvester, you can go for the small, but not for the... Eternal damnation, <laughs> engine of damnation. One of my friends actually tried to to uh, make me take this one because this is the one when when the number of hits you can boost with your real tokens. Yeah, and you have a lot of those. Yeah, because when when the demons are out, you can really boost it because you still get a lot of real tokens. Uh, yeah. So maybe I haven't tried it, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would be interesting. Um, and it's a war platform, uh, mm-hmm. but it it's the wrong wrong size for it. Can't it can't join the the uh, the possessed. That would be awesome if it could. 
No. I th- I think that it's, it's in rules that all my human walls yeah. can join the demon. Oh, okay. So not an option <laughs> anyway. Uh, but uh, could be the uh, same problem as uh, as the Adelons and the um, imps that it's not maybe that useful to have a shooting unit late game. But yeah, but still they, you can, you can yeah. pop it turn two and you can pop yeah. it beside the enemy beside his lines and that's yeah. just one. One yeah. turn, you can't shoot. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's in the maybe. movement phase. He pops up, and then they can just yeah, start blasting. So yeah, it could yeah, be good. Yeah, it's, it's not that good range either. It's 18. <laughs> so turn one, you don't really get many charts. So uh, yeah. I wonder, uh, Mark of the Eternal Champion. That's the um, you become a, a, a wizard. Sorcerer's Antenna is that at its channel, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus one uh, and then the segmented shell and aura of despair and shilling yawn. Shilling no- yawn is yeah. is uh, minus two agility. Aura of despair. Enemy units suffer minus two advance rate to a minimum of one marauding charge range for units with one of uh, Not that useful here. Uh, segmented shell. Uh, it's it's multiple wool. You reduce it. Yeah. No, I don't think it would take any manifestation on this. No. But it's it's pretty cheap. So yeah. it costs two wheel tokens also to get it out. So yeah, you could probably pop, pop it in turn two. Yeah. yeah. Good position. You count as having moved, but I don't know. Does it have quick to fire uh, or something? No. Mm, Volagon. No, it, it would probably suffer minus one to hit from that. That's true. But you, you can probably just put it short range at a flank for an opponent four, so he four. can't charge it. So mm-hmm. yeah, four, four plus and you get uh, 2d6 times two hits uh, yeah. shots plus three, three per extra wheel token. Yeah. Exactly. And, and all the wheel tokens you use to get it there, they're in the movement phase, you use those, so you get more in the magic phase. So Yeah, that's true. You can really boost it. Yeah, yeah not, not that um, pro- an option, definitely, I think. Would be interesting to see. Uh, Press and beast, a hammer. Yeah, a hammer. Uh, uh, that's, that's big. But they're they're good against infantry, basically, not not against big things. And I think that's the thing you struggle with. Yeah. Um, so the the fiends are probably the the better choice. Yeah. I guess. And then they don't have that many AP, right? Uh, AP no, two. AP two on the beast, AP yeah, two on the charge, as charge as with the dar- 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 yeah. yeah. So maybe an option, but things are probably maybe an option, but often when you when you pull out your demons, uh, they're gonna be charged. Uh, <laughs> this is yeah, a unit. They, yeah, that's so, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, you can plan, yeah. plan to get the charge. No. no. Nee. Uh, you can take Aves, can, can you? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So Furies. Uh, Furies are always good, but. Are they yeah. cheaper than Hellhounds? Yeah, a bit cheaper. Uh, flies. Mm, but I'd rather take Hellhounds with uh, a lot of attacks, the lethal yeah. strikes on them. Uh, and, I, yeah. If you use them as, as Chef, the Furies are better. Yeah, that's the shaper, but uh, the you, you get dual usage out of the hounds because <clears throat> they can fight too. Yeah, so. but when I need to use the shaft, it's it's often the turn they get summoned <laughs> when yeah. I need the shaft. So yeah, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so as as pure shaft, this is better. Mm. Uh, Veil serpents. <sighs> How does Morphlings y- y- during spell selection? Yo, yeah, they they are still in the list. So you have to have to choose uh, the um, yeah. yeah during the spell selection, and then you can deploy them. Yeah, probably not. No, I don't think so. Uh, you ha- already have wizards in the army, and yeah, and this is a wizard that's not on the board. Turn yeah. one. No, no, nah, nah. Pass. I took them, but yeah. <laughs> um, 
blowflies? They were definitely an option, yeah. Maybe a bit expensive for to do. Uh, yes. units of... Yeah, they, they're the same thing as the Clawfiends. They go over 600 points when you take a big unit, so... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's the last unit. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> quite a lot, a lot of things to choose from. Um, how many points do you, do did you spend on the uh, on on the demon section usually? Don't have that in my head, but claw beans were a bit over six hundred. The lemurs were five hundred ish, and then two yeah. units of. Hellhounds, 175 each. So, yeah. Oh, so um, not I was quite. close to it. No, okay. not 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 maxed. I wasn't maxed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd be inter- It would be interesting to see a see a list that really maxes out on on demons. Uh, yeah. Not really sure how to, how you build that, but yeah. I think the the problem is getting them. <laughs> To the board, then. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, and if, if you face a really really aggressive army, you won't have have the chance to get them to the board at all, basically. So we call it a big problem: really yeah. aggressive combat armies. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because they 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 can be in in combat before you had the chance to do any summoning, quite easily. Yeah. yeah. That's issue. That's an issue. Yeah. Uh, so, do you want to look a little bit at the model options? Yeah, sure. We can start with your army. I took some pictures during the tournament. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see if my computer will cooperate. No. Uh huh. Yeah. Here. So this is an in-game picture. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. I think I had one when you put up it up for best painted as well, but it's not a good picture. But the whole army at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, do you wanna? Run through it. Well, uh, the core of it is the Frost Grave box. Uh, they have a core box with cultists, uh, which gives yep. you a core human body if you want to use it. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, converts pretty good with Gang Workshop's old models and old bits. Uh, works perfectly with arms and legs. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's pretty good. But the, the heads are also awesome because I think there's a lot of heads in it, so it gives you a head. Yeah, so uh, perfect for <laughs> conversion. Other models just cut off the head and put a hoodie on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice. Uh, uh, then there's another German company that I don't remember the name of that does a resin kit with cultist heads. Uh, that one I used a lot, and the heads are beautiful. I think if you just search for cultist heads, like bits or something like that, you, you get it. Let's see. With a Google, because I found it pretty pretty easy in, in the beginning. It's pretty pretty expensive. But the heads are beautiful. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I know Statuesque Miniatures has some heads, maybe not for cultists. Does that ring a bell? No. I remember it was a German German site, yeah. I think. Yeah. My internet seems to be struggling with the both uh, both the browsing <laughs> websites and uh, uh, having this conversation, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, Anvil Industry. Uh, no, wait, might have it here. 
Uh, tabletop art. Oh, okay. Let's see. Tabletop art. Yeah. Cultist heads one. Yeah. And it's both for 40k and and. Yeah, with some uh, sci-fi masks there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can move on to uh, some other things. You have a lot of uh, unit fillers in the cultist units too. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of what it, ex executioner models, and those hoods worked perfectly also. So I think I have an ogre with an executioner hood. Uh, yeah, that in the back here. Yeah, and that's yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of companies these models are from. Yeah, uh, it's uh, also this... if you're pretty good with green stuff. You can make a hoodie. Yeah, it's fairly not, fairly easy. But I made a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, this dude here that's doing some sacrificing, I I recognize, but I can't re re remember where he's from. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if that's a Blood Bowl miniature from an Italian company. Maybe. And the, the guy that's the, the guy that's holding the knife in the back uh, is a Spanish company. Nor Norba? Yeah, I think it's Norba. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a mix from a lot of different companies. Here we have the heads, heads yeah. and those are really nice. Yeah, this resin is a really good cost also. Yeah, they, they get the job done. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. So um, that's neat. Uh, the uh, possessed units, you have mm -hmm. basically used some sort of soldiers with uh, some head swaps. Yeah, that's, that's the Games Workshop Imperial Guard miniatures with great swords yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with resin heads or frostbridge heads uh, and the spearman the red unit is uh five forge games the yeah that's the, the the northman yeah yeah and, and a head swap and, yeah that's what yeah this is works perfectly good good quality miniatures Oh. I love them. I love them. <laughs> they were they were a bit of late with their Kickstarters. I think some some people haven't even received their Kickstarter yet, but I yeah. think they're available on the website now. But the yeah. malls are perfect. Yeah, I, I was really keen on getting the uh, or no, not keen on getting, but I really liked their zombies. But I yeah, already I, have I, I boxes of those also. Oh, I, I want to. I want to have a look at the, look at those. I already, yeah. already have two two hundred and ten zombies, so I don't need any more. Never have too many I, zombies. Uh, I already have too many zombies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, you have some demons up here. Yeah, they were a quick buy. Uh, they were a new kit from Mantic. I don't yeah. remember the army name, but it was a big box and yeah, like, abyss or something, I think, or. Uh, a hundred curious and your demon army was ready. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's sweet. So you, the the hellhounds were from them as well. Yeah, good yeah. models. A lot of unipose models, though. I think it was yeah. like three out of ten that was different. They were resin. The rest was normal plastic. But yeah. they they look okay. They need a little more paint, but I I I, I was in a hurry. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> I, I I guess so. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should talk about uh, this thing, the sacrificial altar. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really know which model to use, so I that's from I think it's Age of Sigmar. They call it endless spells or something. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the 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 hand from of Slanish, basically. Yeah. So I, yeah. it's supposed to hold a mirror, so I took away the mirror and green stuff the hand, so. It looked yeah. okay. And yeah. As a course. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks and neat. The, the, the uh, small ones there also. They're they're from a Canadian company company. 
that I don't remember the name of either, but that's Hop. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of companies here. I can understand it's difficult to, to keep track of. The coolness of Halfling cultists is low. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I guess the sacrificial altar, you, you, it's uh, quite easy to, to just make some uh, at an yeah. altar from uh, styrofoam or something if you want to go that route, or so, some, something more ambitious like this. So, yeah. But but it's it's uh, this army is really creative, but I think it's very well suited for uh, for the purpose. Uh, it's um, you can go go in any direction really with this army. Yeah. And that's awesome. But be prepared to not win that many games. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, I guess we should talk about that. You you br- brought them to the do, tournament. How did how did you do? Do we have to? No, <laughs> uh, that, that bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. I I went against uh, two Wars of the Dark Arts armies. Uh, yeah. One Ogre Khan army, uh, and what was more? It was. Uh, <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> some elves. It was, yeah, uh, some elves also. The elves was the only game I really won, and then everything worked in my favor. Uh, so uh, I got four pretty devastating losses. I took four battle points in all of them, but there were I, I wasn't even close to winning. Uh, but against the Sylvan elves, I crushed it and took all the points. Uh, okay. Yeah. In, I guess you, you face a lot of, of aggressive armies there, and maybe you should you really have to build for that kind of of matchup and have have this uh, this uh, scouting cultist units as chef perhaps. Uh, yeah, maybe some. I more. would like another option for chef than than yeah. a frenzied unit with moon or because yeah, yeah, really something. Most armies have something mounted, so uh, yeah. a normal yeah, a, a, a mounted, mounted option would be really cool for this. Yeah, and they don't even have to be good; they just need to be yeah. able to chat. <laughs> yeah, and you, you, as you said, this was this uh, was originally an uh, Empire army, so I know that you have some some cavalry models models ready yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, it would be awesome if you could use that, those. Uh, but who knows? They might do an update down the line and uh, oh, we get some of those. I'm hoping for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how powerful they are. Uh, I think that in the right hands, uh, and if you if you play a lot of games with them, you can they can be, be really deadly. But yeah. I think it's a very difficult army to master. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because there's, 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 yeah, there's the so many options. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You can really tailor it. Yeah, and and, and uh, also op- options during the game because you, do, you don't deploy until <laughs> mid game, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's tricky. Okay. Um, we've rambled on for a long while now but i think we've yep. given this army a, a thorough look do you have any closing thoughts no not really but it's a very fun army to play uh i had a lot of fun playing it even i even if i lost a lot of games with it it's it's fun to play it's something extra that i don't really think the other armies have uh it's 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 I I had fun even even when losing. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what I want to bring to a tournament. I I I can play for for to win, but I want to be able to laugh when I lose and have a good yeah. time with my opponent. Yeah, that's that's really important. That's a good yeah. point. Uh, I just noticed here that's some um, a, a war cry, Age of Sigmar miniature, isn't it, in the back here? Yeah, oh yeah, uh, it's one of the new ones. I I, yep. I bought too few of the spearmen from the start kit. Start uh, <laughs> so you had to fill, fill it out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah but it's, 
it's uh, they they blend in nicely. Have such such a, a varied mix everywhere, so it, you can you can really just use anything you like. It seems <laughs> that's awesome. It just needs the right head. <laughs> yeah, right head, and it's it's all set. Uh, Kingdom of Equitain, perhaps in the last game. Yeah. Exactly. Also, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah also, <laughs> put, no aggressive. No. It was all about uh, pushy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay! Perfect. So, game. Not, not the best matchups then. <laughs> oh. so, all right. Yeah. Uh, for myself, uh, closing thoughts. I think it's a really great addition to uh, the Night Age um, supplement armies, and I hope uh, that tournaments will allow uh, allow them to be used. I'm curious to see what uh, what can be done with them um both in terms of um, of models and uh and gameplay mm. so that's it will be interesting to see yeah um but i think we'll wrap it up at that yeah sounds good uh i've stopped painting now i, I put a, a a base coat of black on the on the cloth of my spectral unders but i haven't gotten that much done but whatever. <clears throat> I'll show some picture, pictures, uh, also a picture of the uh, finished five. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you very much for coming on. Yeah. Uh, I think it uh, became, it became a, a pretty good episode, and I hope the listeners have enjoyed it as well. So thank you very much for watching. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat>